think Palestine is like the sacrifice lamb to show us what's happening in the world. Like we're not safe. It's not just military people that they target or just Russians that they target. It's literally anyone who is telling the truth about Ukraine. The Arabic world has been at war with itself for many, many, many years. You know what I mean? Carlos Reyes on the humble show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here we all in, here we all in. So grab your boys now because you know we all win. Lift your hands up and give them praise. Blessed every day full of grace. Yeah. Here we all in, here we all in. Welcome back to the All In Podcast. I am your host, Carlos Reyes. And today in the studio, we have the most censored man on the internet. But before I introduce him, let me just go around the room and introduce the usual suspects. To the center here, I got the most interesting man in the industry, Mr. Zadie. <laughs> to my left here, joining us today is my business partner, Mr. Sal Shakir. Hey and to my other left, Mr. Born Closer, AKA Adrian Salgado. Now back to our guest. Again, I will repeat, he is the most censored man on the internet and on today's show, you are going to find out why. Mr. Jackson Hinkle. How's Thanks it going, brother? Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. Most censored man on the internet, but not in the world because Assange is still in prison. He's not on the internet, right? Got it. So Got it. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. Absolutely, bro. Thank you so much for, for coming down. Uh, we appreciate what you're doing. We truly do because I believe that you're even doing it at a higher level than we're doing it. And we're doing our best. You know what I mean? Um, there's a lot, there, there's a revival, by the way, there's a revival coming out of the business sector, right? The marketplace where there's very few people that have drawn the line in the sand. There's very few people that are, you know, putting aside their own self-interest because we know what it comes with, right? It comes with a lot of backlash. It comes with a lot of censorship. It comes with a lot of, uh, uh, shadow banning and limited engagement, but we have decided that, you know what, when we look back at, at this era of, of time, we're going to say that we stood for what we, for what we believed in, man. So thank you for doing what you're doing, brother. Yeah, no, I mean, the prayer you started us off with today, I mean, it really, it speaks to all of it. It is a fight since the beginning of time. And, you know, we're just the ones carrying the torch now, but, you know, I think, more and more average people like not the not the elite right but just average people that are the ones that actually support businesses like yours are waking up to what's going on and they want to support businesses like yours so sure they can they can ban us they can deprioritize us but when you have the support of the people uh there's no stopping you so absolutely um what does trump say the uh the silent the silent majority yeah right yeah. i feel like we are the silent majority you we know? are. We are. We, we, it's just you from, from, you know, from, uh, the way that these social media platforms are structured and owned and operated, you don't get to really see that. Right. You don't get to see that. No, but you know, it, it's, it's a question of, are you anti-human or are you pro-human mm. and sure Bill Gates and everyone who's, you know, pushing all this crazy agenda, George Soros, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, they can try to act like normal humans. They can try to act like they are pro-humanity, but through their actions, they clearly dictate that they are anti-human and uh, they even adhere to an ideology called Malthusian ideology, which wow. basically means that they support a world where 500,000 people make up the entire global population. They support degrowth politics and policies, which is why they push all this covid stuff and climate change stuff and uh even all these wars like taking us close to world war three when you when you look at it in its totality you begin to understand like oh each policy they push actually will result in less humans on this earth and less humans multiplying for generations and to more come. division of course a lot more course. division right i feel like as people we've come such a long way when it comes to you know uh Ra you know, racial division, right? Economic division. You know what I mean? Like you can think about it, right? We're to a point where we can all go to a baseball game and we're not even conscious of who's white and who's black and who's rich and who's poor. Think about that for a second. That wasn't the case in the 1950s. You know what I mean? We've come such a long way. And for some reason, you know, there's this constant resistance you know, like I'll give you an example, you know, the George Floyd situation, which 
I don't agree with what went down, right? Like nobody should have, I don't think any police officer should have their knee on someone's neck unless they really are, they feel threatened, right? Their life. I get that. There's justification there, right? But what came after the rhetoric that came after that situation, I mean, look, look at what's come out with Black Lives Matter, you know, with the, 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 the money and the, the funneling of the money and the right wasting the money and God knows what mansions and cars and whatever the heck they were <laughs> using it on. Right. Nothing they were supposed to use it on. No, no, like nothing to, to, to uplift black America. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and but then again, it's like sometimes you got to ask yourself, you know, was 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 someone like George Floyd a ploy? Right. Was he used? Was he leveraged? Was he instructed? You know what I mean? Was he puppeteered? And that's not the only situation. There's been countless of other situations that you can actually say the same thing about. And, and then somebody, people will call you a conspiracy theorist because you're looking at things from a, you know, with your spiritual lenses and not whatever the hell the, the media is feeding you. You know what I mean? Well, it's, it's, it, what happened with George Floyd is, and the, and the, what came out of it. It was uh, what we do to countries all across the world. If we don't like a leader in country X, Y, or Z, what what do all these political think tanks and foreign destabilization, yeah. destabilize, color revolution, regime change operation? Yeah. They don't like Trump, so they say he's a racist. Then they have this incident happen, and you know whatever he had fentanyl in his system, he had a knee on his neck. You know, there's a lot of things that went on there. But what ended up happening was all the same groups that fund color revolutions and third world countries funded the protests and the riots in America, which were targeted, of course, at Trump. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and real quick, because the, the, now we're going to segue into I got some some pretty good questions about what's going on in the Middle East right now. Right. And this is how I want to segue. You mentioned that uh, we're very quick to destabilize, you know, strong leaders, leaders that may not fit the agenda. You know what I mean? Right. Um, well, look what happened to Saddam in the Middle East. And, and I know this sounds sickening when I say this, but I'm like, that was probably one of the few people in the Middle East. Like that was one of the few leaders that I personally re had respect for because the Middle East was pretty damn stabilized when he was in, in power. You know what I'm saying? Right. Let's, let's, let's go to another guy, Gaddafi. Gaddafi was trying to make his, uh, his country economically independent, Right. Uh, independent with with energy and Currency. you know of course now do they come with their other things you know other negative stuff yeah absolutely but the fact of the matter is from what it looks like that wasn't a case like North Korea where you know what I mean you're starving your own people and you're you're you know you're you're suppressing your own people you know that wasn't the case in the Middle East when those folks were in power right why did we go after those those leaders in in those regions? Well, I would just say that it's it's exactly what you said. It's that they it's it ultimately has to do with sovereignty. So what does that mean? It means that those governments, those countries are not captured by uh, the U.S. You know, banking cartel. They're not captured by the petrodollar. They're not captured by, um, you know, these major mega corporations that are stealing their raw resources. They don't have U.S. military bases. And uh, that's why we're told to hate them. And ultimately, why we're fed so many lies about these countries. And then that's why people like Hillary Clinton can go out and say, yeah, you know, uh, we came, we saw, we killed Gaddafi and, and laugh about it. Yeah. And I'll say one more thing. Uh, today, the modern iteration of people like Gaddafi and people um, who have, uh, you know, been the target of the U.S. empire, it is Putin, it's Xi Jinping, it's uh, all these brave resistance leaders in the Middle East. It's even Kim Jong Un. I mean, I love Kim Jong Un, and I've I've no problems with him. And I think most of what we're fed is just CIA propaganda about North Korea. Mm. You so look, you don't think that's really going down over there, where there's starvation and no, and, and no, and the light. They, they, I heard, I heard this. This could be a conspiracy, right? Please debunk it if if you have knowledge of it. I heard that they took the Bible and they removed like figures from the bible like christ and other you know and they put like the the family of kim jong-un uh in in replacement of those figures to brainwash and program i don't know if that's true that was a wild conspiracy theory that someone brought up to me have you heard anything about that 
I hear crazy stories every day about Kim Jong Un. It's like <laughs> they said that they banned the the Kim family haircut in North Korea because it was getting to, like they the, say the Edgar haircut. Yeah, the Edgar, Edgar haircut. Right? Right? Asian Asian Edgar. Arizona. <laughs> but you know, it's like at the end of the day, you look at North Korea. And uh, I mean, we absolutely massacred the Korean people. We established this fake country of South Korea mm -hmm. in the Korean War. Mm -hmm. The Korean yeah. people today are still fighting for a free Korea. They see South Korea as an occupation. They don't, you know, they don't see it as a legitimate country. Wow. You look at South Korea, their economy is in tatters. The people there, the men are killing themselves at very high rates. Suicide rates are very high. You have all these effeminate men in South Korea. North Korea, Whatever problems they have, and I'm sure they have them, but I'm sure a lot of it's due to sanctions and blockades. Mm -hmm. uh, they have strong men. They have men who are patriotic. They have men that stand for their country, stand mm. against the empire. And ultimately, they're doing a really good job right now with uh, military production. They're producing a lot of Russia's uh, military assets that they're using to win the war in Ukraine. And just two weeks ago, Kim Jong-un unveiled North Korea's first hypersonic missile system we spend a trillion dollars on our military in the United States. We we don't even have a hypersonic missile here, but they North Korea has hypersonic missiles, but we don't. How does that make any sense? Do well, you, go ahead. Yeah. Do you think that's the honest truth, though? Right. Or do you think that they're just holding that because they want to feel like empowered, like the U.S. wants to feel like they're empowered, like they still need something, you know, almost like a chess move. Like, yeah, we don't have it, but. Oh, you know, that we that we actually we have do. hypersonic missiles. Yeah. Well, the U.S. I think it's I think it is more complicated. I think it's that uh, I think it is possible for the United States to create hypersonic missiles, of course. But there's a vested interest in continuing to fail hypersonic missile uh, test production. Mm -hmm. uh, they they have to create this uh, very complicated metal alloy to create hypersonic missiles. And think about it. If you can say, oh, we failed again, we need another hundred billion dollars. Right. right. Uh, then you keep the money train flowing. Right. Yeah. So or what about why, why create a, a what is it a, a hypersonic? Mm -hmm. that, why create a hypersonic missile when you can just buy an army in Ukraine? It's true. It's true. But I think um, you know, for the time being, we're at least still living in an era that's dictated in large part by uh, conflicts of attrition and how many men you have and how many uh, men you can afford to lose. But I mean, if world war breaks out and, and the red buttons are pressed, then of course you would need hypersonic missiles mm -hmm. and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So what about what about the, the people that defected from North Korea? You think they're like plants or it's just kind of like people that just want fame here in America or they want to have some sort of income? Like what would motivate that there was that lady from North Korea that she's all over the internet. Yeah. And she's talking. She was she's sex like, trafficked. Yeah. She was the main yeah. one that's saying all this stuff about the Supreme leader. At this point, you don't know what to believe. Brother. What's what, like, what's your take on that? Well, she blocked me on Twitter because I called her out for all, she's, she's like, <laughs> Oh my goodness. She's at, her name's <laughs> Yonmi <laughs> Park. <laughs> Yonmi Park. And she, it's actually a meme on, on online where it's like, whenever the most absurd lies come out about any country in the world from like, the CIA or the State Department, they just repost her image under the story. <laughs> but, you know, if a country's so bad and so horrific, you'd think people would just leave on their own accord. But South Korea actually pays people 800,000 US dollars to defect and uh, give intelligence to the South Korean government, which they work in close coordination with the United States. So it's like, if you have to pay people eight hundred thousand dollars who are living in North Korea to come across and and repeat lies, I don't think it's as bad as we're making it out to be. And actually, a lot of defectors will go to South Korea and then say, you know, it's it, the grass is always greener. You know, it's actually not as nice here as we thought. And they say we want to go back to North Korea, but of course, you know, you can't really can't. go back to North Korea once you leave. But oh yeah, so it's it it is interesting, unless you're Dennis Rodman. Yeah, unless you're Dennis Rodman or right. hopefully me in the future. I'd love to go. I'd well, love to go. I, I think you can get away with that. I know Trump was like the first president and God knows how long that was able to actually go over there. You yeah. know, right. Yeah. Like, how is he so bad when he was it, it's it, and I get a lot of crap on this on this stuff, um, especially on Instagram. You know, I'm, I'm a Mexican-American. I, I was born in Mexico, brought here legally, went through the legal system. It took me 15 years, got my citizenship. <laughs> And I grew up a Democrat until I figured out, like I became conscious enough to be like, wait a minute, 
I don't like what they're doing. You know what I mean? That, these aren't my values, right? And then I, I, I flipped into a more of a conservative because that's what I believe in. And then I get, I mean, dude, I get so much backlash and oh, you Trump lover, you coconut, right? <laughs> and I'm like, well, hello, dude. Like, are you guys okay with what you guys are? How are you guys not seeing this? Yeah. Right? You How are you not a, seeing this? You get called like, a coconut? Yeah, yeah. Brown on the outside, white on the inside. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, dude, how it's like you guys talk about how Trump was going to start the World War Three. Yeah. You guys yeah. talked about how this, you know, the big bad orange man was just crazy and he was going to push the red button. But he's the guy over there in the Middle East bro trying to broker a, a, a peace deal with Netanyahu. He's the guy over in North Korea shaking hands. Yeah. Right. He's the guy that Putin respects. And like things were a little different when he was in office. You know, that's not what it is these days. No, no. I mean, I think. uh you look at anything he did foreign policy wise going to meet with Putin and Helsinki going to meet with Kim Jong Un it's like that's when he received the most 24/7 attacks from yeah. the mainstream media why is that because oh those people are supposed to be our enemies that's why the military industrial complex gets the big checks because we have official enemies mm. that we need our missiles for mm. when Donald Trump goes over there and and maybe you know, it's not perfect. It's it's not squeaky clean. But, you know, he goes over there and he tries his best to actually negotiate peace and de-escalate and, you know, have some sort of a win-win uh, cooperation between our two countries. It's like that's exactly what America First is all about. It's, yeah. a, it's about saying, no, we're not going to choose to fight anyone's wars. We're going to try and establish peace with everyone. So they attacked him so harshly when he went and met with Kim. But that was my that was my favorite and, one of my favorite days. Well, and and look at everything that's coming out now, right? Like they're doing everything. They're throwing the entire book at him, so he's not able to run. And yes. you know what I'm and, saying? And he might win New York because of it now, <clears throat> because he's rallying in New York. Like he can't leave. The like state. you got to be stupid. <laughs> and you, now, and now, yeah. it might turn red. I mean, he you got to be stupid to not see what what what's being done to sabotage yeah. the campaign you know but what i mean to that point you're like how are they not seeing it mm -hmm. well they're not like seeing it because they they see so many other things that's irrelevant and they make it relevant to that subject where people get to see you the enemy like in in, in north korea you're talking about north korea or south korea i just saw something on my feed oh the difference between north korea and south korea what they dress what they eat what they look like they try to dehumanize that kind of what whoever is they they're whoever they want to be against mm. and it doesn't matter like you're to the to the people they only see what what they get what they get shown mm -hmm. and you're like well how are they not seeing it yeah they can't see it because they get their brain can only consume so much and they get to, get to consume all bunch of ugliness everywhere mm -hmm. about trump about uh korea about kim jong-un about saddam I, i'm from iraq mm -hmm. and i i live i was i lived my half of my life there and they made they painted him to be this guy. Yes, was he was he a rough dude around the edges? Yes, he was. Well, well why was he rough though? Because he was hanging spies. Like, dude, what are you supposed to do? He's well, killing people that are out of line. That's what. Well, right. Like, Causing remember problems. when people would betray the country, he would make an example out of them. Like, I'm sorry, you know. And again, I'm not sitting here, you know, sponsoring death anywhere. But what I'm telling you is. What is he supposed to do? Yeah, but think about the point I was trying to make is Saddam Hussein, they try to throw the book at him in every angle because he was the he was the guy that stood up. He actually was the guy that fired missiles and said, I'm going to wait for the rest of the countries to fire those two extra missiles. Wait, what, okay, what are statement. you talking about? That was the was that what war was that? Was uh, that he actually he actually was that fired the Kuwait war. The Kuwait no, no, war? he fired missiles to, uh, to Israel, which is obviously I'm, I'm against war overall. Mm. But he fired the missile. Well, said, you were I'm part. A, you were you were in the war. You were I, part I, of the I, war. I, I was born into war. I was actually. Yeah. I had a. I was a baby for the first for the first war. I was one year old. Yep. And then I I, I witnessed many wars. Mm -hmm. But what happened is that they painted Saddam in the picture of the mass destructions. And, and there's movies about this. Yeah. You know, there's Iraq has mass destructions. Was there any mass uh, destruction? weapons of mass destruction? What, yeah. Me weapons yeah. of mass destruction. Was there any? No, there was no. none. Did we find one, by the way? No, there was none. But let me. But that's what they fed you. Like they, they had it. They're like they, they tried everything. That was before social media was a thing like yeah, this. Right. So they had to create this thing where they get to say, "Oh, it's okay to go and kill people." He's such a bad person, but now he's such a bad person. It didn't make enough impact to people who go fight him. Let's create this danger around the globe that this guy is crazy and he's gonna fire, you know, those missiles against us. 
Well, and they went, and there was no mass destruction. <laughs> Gaddafi, they made him look like a a crazy dude. I mean, is he is he like a fully sane dude? I don't know, but they definitely painted him to be the craziest dude that you can think about. He has these females uh, guards. They're they're badasses. Right. And and he's like, oh, he only trusts women and he probably has their his way. Oh, I don't know what they painted about him. I just know they painted him to be crazy. And to us, it's like, oh, yeah, he is a POS. We need to go liberate these people. Right. Yeah. It's OK to go kill him. Yeah. Same thing for Saddam. Saddam was the lid of the the, the 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 trash when he was removed. Iraq became a magnet of bad people. A from, vacuum. A vacuum, yeah, no. from, from everywhere. Even Saudi Arabia. The most insurgents that came to Iraq was from Saudi Arabia. Where, where in Iraq are you from? I'm from Baghdad. Okay. And uh, I, I mean, I supported the U.S. military while I was in Iraq. My dad got shot at. I almost got kidnapped. Like, I had family members that died. We came here and I supported the U.S. military through something called rotation, where before they get deployed to Iraq, Afghanistan, they go through a series of training. And... I went. I did that for three and a half years, so I understand all of it. Mm -hmm. But the propaganda that happens around that—that's what I don't believe in. Because now it's in social media. It's it's right and it's in our cell phones. Yeah. You get to see what's happening, and if you know, you're like, I see what's happening not, here. Not really well, though. Not if you're Jackson Hink or Sean King. You don't. You know. You get what I'm saying? Well, like, they ban him. They ban Sean they King. They ban him too. Yeah, they ban him. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Well, it, and they you know, try they, to suppress. They, they ban Sean and, and myself because. Uh, uh, we were defending the Houthis, Ansar Allah in Yemen, this ragtag group of, you know, guys living in Yemen, one of the poorest places on the face of the earth. For sure. And they shut down the whole Red Sea to all international shipping besides the country supporting Gaza, like Russia and China. Mm -hmm. So we were defending them. And then Biden decided to re-add the Houthis, which is this military, it's basically, you know, the government, the military of Yemen, uh, to the U.S. terror list, and he said, we'll only remove you if you stop the blockade. Well, the Houthis are saying, we're not going to stop the blockade until the genocide ends. Ooh. So, you know, it's it's tit for tat. The power's in their hands. The U.S. said, we're going to send a six coalition Navy operation to come and wipe out the Houthis. They tried, they failed. You know, they, they lost uh, multiple U.S. Navy SEALs in the operation. They got their ship blown up. The U.K. got their ship blown up. It was, it was terrible all by this, again, ragtag group of guys who are like launching RPGs out at uh, these ships coming in, multi-billion dollar ships probably. And, you know, it's like they they let Sean speak about Black Lives Matter. They mm -hmm. let Sean speak mm -hmm. about when he was mm -hmm. saying bad things about Trump. But mm -hmm. the moment that he told his six million followers that the Houthis are good because they put death before dishonor, they, mm. they value... You know, they value their lives, their their lives in the eyes of God, unlike the leaders in Saudi Arabia and the UAE who put prophets before honor. Mm -hmm. That's when they ban him. Are we trying to piss off the Arabic world on purpose? I don't think I are think, we, are, no, I, I want to. Do you think we're trying to piss them off on purpose? It doesn't matter what we're trying to do. We are, you know, we are doing that. We're we're. Think about this. Uh, you're familiar, I'm sure. with We're picking a fight with uh, bricks. Yeah. The BRICS grouping. Yeah. BRICS has Saudi Arabia now, who, mm -hmm. you know, Saudi Arabia basically in a lot of ways controls the petrodollar. Mm -hmm. um, BRICS has the UAE, which has a very long standing close relation with the, the United States. BRICS has Iran. Uh, BRICS has six of the top 10 oil producing nations in the world. They control 52% of the world's oil supply. Uh, why would we piss them off when they control so much of the world's resources? And that's only going to continue to increase um, this October when they bring in new BRICS members. They're having a summit in Russia. It's like we're literally looking in the eye of the people that could completely tank our economy yeah. and giving them the middle finger. But do you think those elite that we were talking about before the podcast, right, the people that are already kind of ahead of the curve, right, and in the know, do you think they really even care about the U.S. economy anymore because they have so much reach throughout the entire world? Like they're willing to just go ahead and sacrifice the U.S. economy for that. What What did you say the the ideology is that they Malthusian ideology? Yeah. I mean, Malthusian. it would make sense that they would have in order to follow that ideology, you would have to surrender your your the country that ultimately got you started for the bigger for what seems like a bigger nut at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, I think. Um... 
if you look at the United States today and if you look at any Western government, they the way that they control the masses is not through like online propaganda. It's not through any of that. I mean, that, of course, is influential and it does make a difference. But what about when you look at the fact that literally everyone in this country is straddled with debt. Everyone lives paycheck to paycheck. They govern by debt. Forty percent right. of every dollar that we pay in taxes goes to actually paying off our debt. But we're not paying debt to the United States government. We're paying debt to, um, you know, this private cartel of banks and investment firms that actually control the, the our big, government. The big funds at the top. So yeah, it's, it's, the United States is in debt. To your point, it's like how are they going to teach citizens to not be in debt when the government's in debt? It's like going to a mentor. That makes you know twenty five thousand dollars a year, and you're you're like, hey, how do I become a millionaire? It's not going to happen. It's, no. it's just not going to happen. And you know the answer to that is, you know the debt the debt's never really supposed to be paid off. That the whole the whole idea of the debt structure we have here is that it will never be paid off. It never be paid off, and it'll just keep increasing and increasing. But if you look historically, if you look in the Bible, if you look at any great uh, leaders that have uh, risen through like the empirical empirical times. How did they actually come to power and what did they do to earn the trust of people in their empires once they came to power? Complete debt forgiveness. Oh. And what is that going to do in the United States? Of course, it's going to tank the entire, you know, financial uh, stranglehold on the United States. All these investment firms will go under, all these big banks will go under, but the people will be free. You know, it's it sounds crazy, but that is what has happened all throughout history. Debt forgiveness is the answer to sovereignty and liberation. Yeah, but how do how do you how do you stay uh, unfocused by your all? You're always running on that treadmill. You're always on that hamster wheel trying to get the next dollar, the next dollar, and they put you in more debt and more debt and more debt, and you don't even get to think about anything else. Oh, the government's taking care of us. Don't worry, we have Medicare. Don't worry. Oh, we're 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 taking care of uh, social security. Uh, social security. We're taking care of uh, uh, less fortunate, the homeless problems, and but we're putting more we're we're putting more strain on our people, but they don't even know it because that just became part of life. You wake up in the morning, you go to work, and you might have a day or two off, and you try to try to relax, and then you're back to the mundane stuff, and again, you don't even think about anything. You try to survive, financially survive. And you can't even think about what's going on outside of this. Oh yeah, this is a bad. This is a this country is bad. Oh, uh, our um, let, let, uh, uh, Trump. Trump is all for money. Like the guy, the guy made his. The guy, whether we like him or not, the guy is a brilliant financial businessman. Business yeah. mm -hmm. And he was trying to do the same thing for the United States. Counter to that, what's happening today? We're more in debt. We're whether we like it or not. We're definitely in. Would you call it depression? Oh, we're definitely in a recession. recession. We're in a recession. Are we close to depression? I don't know, but we're definitely feeling it. Everybody's feeling it. And we're trying to, we're paying, we're paying, a, uh, we paid how many billions of dollars by accident to uh, Ukraine? No. Six yeah. billion Oops, dollars. Glitch. Six billion. By act, how do you, like, I want do, do you fat glitches. finger that? <laughs> well, I think that <laughs> the situation in America is still, it's still tenable for a lot of people, you know? But I think, um, I think it would be, I mean, if I was a betting man, I would place my bets on the fact that the U.S. economy is not going to be around in the way we know it much longer, that the state of general peace in America is not going to exist for much longer. The mm. power of the petrodollar is not going to be around for much longer. I mean, it, it's like, you know, people always talk about civil war or civil war coming. I mean, I think 100% civil war is coming. I'm not allowed to, as an American citizen, say I, I would support a civil war, but it's... Uh, it's inevitable. It kind of seems that way, right? Yeah. What are the sides? What are going to be the, the two sides, in your opinion? I don't think it's going to be two sides. I think... It, have you seen that new movie, Civil War? No, oh, I keep hearing oh. good things about it. It's really good, actually. Yeah. You should watch it. But I think, I think you're going to have, like, hundreds of groups. I think you're going to have... Yeah. Most of the elite are going to leave the country. Sense. Divide and conquer. That makes sense. You're going to have like all the gangs will have their own factions. You're going to have like influencers with their own factions. You're going to have <laughs> uh, all the various organizations in America already like paramilitary groups will have their own factions. The government will have its own faction. Like there's going to be uh, parties will have their own faction. It's going to be a lot. ZD, what? Where would you go with the little people or with Armenian? <laughs> Jesus. The U.S. Armenians. <laughs> I don't know. I'd probably go on an island where Epstein's not on, something like that. 
Got it. Safe bet. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, just circling back to everything that's going on right now, um, it, it looked from what it appears, I feel like I'm reliving 2020 again, where I remember going to bed on election night, going to bed, and I'm like, Pfft. This is in the bag. It's oh, done. Yeah. Trump just white. This is a huge wave. Like, right, the, the red wave came. And, like, Biden has absolutely no chance. Like, this dude's ridiculous, right? Um, and then I wake up, and then Biden won, right? What do you think they're going... They can't do what they did the first... that In 2020, they can't do that again. Like, again, there's just so much evidence out there that we're kind of... We're going to be watching for that stuff, right? What do you think they're going to do this time to stay in power well i don't think well alex jones always says this it's like they can't stop a landslide you know and i think that's what we're about to see is a landslide election uh but that kind of gets my point also about civil war and general unrest and the collapse of our economy um it's you know it, it is really scary when you think about it because trump if he's acting rationally without fear of blackmail or anything he would look at the situation presented before him and say, all these people wronged me. All these people hate America. All these people hate humans and humanity. Uh, it's my opportunity to secure vengeance, not just for myself and my family, but for the American people. Mm -hmm. And if you got a guy who's like seriously committed in that manner, uh, there's there's no stopping him. Some I people mean, are going to jail. Well, well I think I think it's, it, it, you know, Look at look at what happened to JFK and RFK and MLK. Like they did, they 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 did amazing things in their own regard. But when you look at the possibility of what Trump could do in this next term, I don't know if he will. I think there's a lot of suspect things with the people he surrounds himself with. But ultimately, if he does, you know, JFK got killed for a lot less than that by our government. <laughs> for so, sure, for you know sure. that that's out there. And if yeah. he does get assassinated. That's when you'd start to see the general breakdown, I think. It's not sure. as easy nowadays, though, to assassinate like back in the day. No, but... It, so they they try to cancel you, the cancel culture, or they try to throw the book at you. They, they, try, to, they, they, they try to throw you in jail. Well, they yeah, can, like they, they're, uh, they're doing that today to Trump. Just well, turn Tate on the said, news. Tate said that the whole, the whole um, formula, right? The formula is uh, they cancel you. If that doesn't work, they throw you in jail, which they're on step number two with Trump. And if that doesn't work, then they go to step number three, which is what you just mentioned. Yeah, it's it's it's, 100 it's the typical correct. same but formula. If we, if we if we see if everybody obviously sees that coming, like that's the only viable option for him not to win the president, win the election this year. What they did in, what they did with this last election, because your wife called me the next morning, pissed was, off at was me. She, crying? Oh. <laughs> she was she was mad at me because I said the same thing. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, we're going to win. You know, it, you know Trump's going to win. We're good. And we all went to sleep that night thinking that same thing. And when she called, she was like, you lied. She, she called me a liar because <laughs> oh my God. like she but she wasn't she was almost in tears. Right. Yeah, really. And that showed you once that they can get away with the with the, the manipulation of the voting system that we currently have in today's that society. That was wild, by the way. Right? That was wild. Because I saw I just, it happen here in Arizona yeah, with Kerry Lake. And I just, I just, yeah, I, I don't know. And correct stage. me if I'm wrong. It's crazy. Correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't there a bill that just passed that allowed illegals that came into the United States that if they felt at the time of voting that they were a U.S. citizen, their vote no, was valid? No, come on. That, that can't be shut true. Down. There's it no passed. way. Huh? I identify sure? as a U.S. citizen. I'm yeah, like <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but I know yeah, the states crazy. are trying to push stuff. Like New York, for example, is trying to push stuff that'll allow, uh, you know, illegal migrants to vote. I don't know in what, what capacity. Extent? Yeah, yeah. Jackson, I'm gonna have all of my Mexican family <laughs> that is residing in Mexico go to the border, Nogales or Rocky Point, and say, it's "I open. identify as an American citizen. Let it's me open. in." I think that's perfect. But it, it, it does come down to, you know, you don't have to really throw someone in jail or kill them. If you make everybody hate somebody, then they don't care if that person's rights are violated. So you make everyone hate Trump and then you start ripping away his constitutional rights and people are cheering it on. But they don't understand that they're cheering for their own destruction mm. by way of the orange man. Mm. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. They've been misled that something is in their interest that's actually not in their interest but that's that's it's it's with everything that's how propaganda operates yeah. okay. people were told you know like people like me my my grandfather's uh 
fought Nazis in World War II. And now I'm being told that it's in my best interest to send $200 billion to Ukrainian Nazis so we can go slaughter <laughs> Russians who were not only our allies in World War II, not only were the first country to respond to America after 9-11, first country to respond after the uh, false flag attack on the USS Liberty. Russia supported us in the U.S. revolution against Britain. Russia supported us in the War of 1812 against Canada, which was occupied by Britain. It's like, how is it in my best interest in any way, shape or form when you look at my family tree to kill Russians and support Nazis? It makes no sense. That's but crazy. That's what they're trying to do. I just found out about that, by the way, through the Putin and Tucker Carlson interview about what's going on in the border. Right. The, mm. the Ukrainian Nazis or whatever they're called. Right. Um, that was wild to hear. I'm like, how is this even possible? How does America support that? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that we don't know over here and we don't hear, you know what I mean? Cause yeah. we're not there. Right. These guys, you know, they get captured in Mariupol, which is a Southern Ukraine. And it's like, they come out of these, um, factories where they were hiding out from the Russians and they've got like Hitler tattoos and swastika tattoos all over them. I mean, they are the ideological inheritors of people like Hitler and Stefan Bandera. Um, and they they did, you know, kill a lot of those ethnic Russians in the Donbass. And that's what prompted this. Putin's 100 percent correct about all that. As much as they say it's like propaganda, it's actually real. I'm going there uh, to Ukraine in uh, a short period of time. And I'm going to be meeting with like all the uh, citizens in these cities. And Russia's gone in now and rebuilt the cities, new schools, new gyms, new apartment buildings, uh, new theaters, all that stuff. Ukraine could have done that at any point over the last eight years, but instead they chose to bomb those citizens, strip them of their rights, tell them they can't speak Russian, and said that they have to oblige to whatever those Ukrainian Nazi paramilitary thugs told them to do. Wait, you're going mm. to Ukraine? Aren't you on the kill list? Ukrainian kill list? Well, I heard something about yeah, that. Yeah, technically it's not Ukraine anymore. Russia has liberated those territories. So oh, that's so now you're good? And those in those places, you know. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about that list, just so like, wh what is that? I'm yeah, sure. How does that even happen? How do you find out like, you're yeah, on it? Does, do they send you an email? <laughs> <laughs> no. They have this website called Miro Threats, and it's public. It's public. Yeah, you can look it up right now, oh, and it's God. a uh, basically it's a it's a website run by the Ukrainian Ministry of Internal Affairs. The website is hosted in Langley, Virginia, which is where the CIA wow. is located. I love that. And um, they include your name and a photo of you on the website and your alleged crimes against Ukraine. Right. So for me, it's like promoting Russian propaganda, saying Ukraine's not a real country. And um, and then if they kill you, they put a big red stamp above your photo on the website and it says liquidated. So wow. I've had several what friends. Is very thoughtful. What is it? An auction website? Yeah, they're, they're I've had so several weird. friends who are on that website who are killed in car bombings oh and uh, pipe bomb attacks. And it's like they kill they kill anyone. Like I've had a 29 year old uh, young woman who was a philosopher in Russia and she was killed in a car bombing in front of her father. You Jeez. know, it's like it's not just military people that they target or just Russians that they target. It's literally anyone who is um telling the truth about ukraine you know Jax, are your parents still alive yeah okay and both you're in good terms with both of them yeah. right yeah. how do they feel you're i mean at such a young age right first off <laughs> what even sparked this like you could have picked up a basketball or a football and became a professional athlete right but yeah. now you're over here trying to overrun you know countries and stuff so like what do your parents think in regards yeah, what, to... For, for, yeah, where the hell did that even come from? Yeah. Like, were you a little boy and you were like, you know what? I don't like the way this no, is I, going. I did pick up the basketball. That was my first love. But okay. I think uh, I used to be like a Bernie Sanders supporter, right? Mm -hmm. oh, and wow. What a conversion. Yeah. He's not a bad guy. <laughs> No, a lot He's of a, a lot guy. of Trump supporters said they would have voted for Bernie Sanders, vice versa. Yeah, they, because they were both dude. deviations from the norm. That's true. Yeah. And... Yeah. Um, at its core, it's like I cared about Bernie because he was saying stuff like in the wars, he was saying he was critique, you know, mild critiques for the financial establishment in this country. And uh, that was that was good. But then, you know, you look and they completely sell out. Yeah. Uh, they completely sell out to the party, endorse Hillary Clinton, endorse Joe Biden. And then even when it comes push comes to shove on the issues, it's like 
Bernie, who was saying in the wars four, eight years ago or whatever, he's now saying we need more money for Ukraine. He's now saying we need, you know, he's like, oh, he's like, I don't know if it's a genocide in Gaza, but, you know, maybe this is a little bit bad. It's like 40,000 people, innocent civilians are dead. What do you mean you don't know if it's a genocide? Children. Most of them like 70 14,000 children. It's crazy. It's like, you know, so when you constantly see the people that are, you know, if if you look at someone like me, I was I was tangentially interested in politics on the national level. I ran for city council in my hometown, but I didn't really follow the national stuff. I was like, oh, this guy's kind of cool, Bernie Sanders. And then it's like, wow, completely sells out. And then you ask, why did they completely sell out uh, over and over and over again to the point where you begin to look at the complete international arena and say, oh, this is all happening on a very large scale. And this is all very bad, and it has the potential to uh, escalate into World War III very quickly if we don't do something about it. You know, I remember Bernie Sanders. It was crazy. So he he was on. He was always talking about millionaires and billionaires. They they cause problems. Millionaires and billionaires. And then he just going off about millionaires and billionaires. And then he became a millionaire. And then he switched his tune and he said, "It's up. It's the billionaires. The billionaires <laughs> have the issue, and millionaires were no longer an issue." Don't you still have your Bernie Sanders bumper sticker? I never on? supported that guy ever in my life. By the way, what the crazy thing is no too, uh, communists believe. Like if you look at China today, hundred percent communist country. Right. Communists, and if you read Marx, if you read like Critique of Goethe, all the all the writings he did, they believe in achieving as much economic prosperity for as many people as possible. What does that mean? That means like as many people as possible who are wealthy and living, you know, uh, good lives. Bernie Sanders says, no, we need to tax the rich. We need to hurt the people that are succeeding. It's like, who are you going to win over with that? Right. That doesn't win anyone <laughs> over. That poor, that, poor that's people. not even what communism is. No. Uh, but it it's just like, you know, I don't even know what it is. It's, it's just it's fake populism to try and win people over without actually changing anything. Mm-hmm. What is taxing? You know, what is taxing Jamie Dimon going to do to change the entire financial system? Nothing. That's not going to do anything. I was going to ask you, um, how or when did you become a person of interest at such a young age? Like where did you, 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 you understand what I'm asking you, right? You're, you're, you're a young guy. When did you um, go viral? <laughs> like, yeah, you're a young dude. Like, I, like here, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, I remember back in 2019, I had my first big stage, right? As a, as a public speaker. I had my first big stage at an event called Thrive, right? National na- national uh, entrepreneur event, you know, thousands of people. That was my first big break, right? Mm-hmm. Where did that happen, like, over the course of time or just consistency or you said something and it just went crazy? Like, when did you become a person of interest and a target? I think the first time was I, I was, like, really into debating people when I first started. I had a YouTube show, which is now banned. Jesus. Uh, but... I they did give you a reason or they just cut U- you off? Ukraine misinformation. Yeah. Wow. No, I've been banned from YouTube, Instagram, Venmo, PayPal. I was banned from Raya, the dating app. I was banned from <laughs> OfferUp. The dating app? Yeah. Hey, off- well, well, off- I want to know more yeah, about that. Bro, you can't, you can't even buy a, a bicycle, bicycle right now? <laughs> ban- banned for life from all these platforms. Banned from PayPal. merchandise stores. Banned from uh, Facebook. Banned from... I did get banned three times before Elon took Twitter. And um, I think that's mostly it. There's probably some more I'm forgetting. What are you doing on Venmo to get banned? That's yeah. nuts. <laughs> the people on my show would donate to uh, me uh, on Venmo and stuff. So they, mm. um, that one was actually, there was a really good art. You know, Glenn Greenwald, have you ever heard of him? He's like a famous journalist, Glenn Greenwald. He, he, he was the one that did the Edward Snowden stories. Mm. Mm. So he exposed that the Venmo and PayPal ban actually came from British intelligence in my six. They were, they weren't just targeting me. It was a whole host of people that were pro Russian, um, that they hit us with that on. But anyways, to your point, I was really into debating and I debated, a several popular YouTubers about, uh, like, like Bashar al-Assad, his presidency in Syria. Cause there's a bunch of lies about him. I debated about uh, AOC and Bernie Sanders and how they're all sellouts with mm-hmm. with another guy named Sam Cedar. Tucker Carlson had me on his show when he was on Fox to talk about Ukraine. And then um, I guess those were the biggest things. And then most recently, uh, everything with Gaza and the Middle East has been 
just so many people have woken up to what's happening there. Um, unlike with Russia, you know, Russia, still, a lot of people buy the Ukraine propaganda. Mm-hmm. But with Gaza, a lot of people are waking up to the it's, truth. It's tough. It's tough to unsee what your eyes are showing you, right? You know, they say that the eyes are uh, their windows to the soul, right? And and I remember, you know, I started to constantly see Sean King's channel and other people that that were airing it out on on Instagram specifically, right, with the babies and everything that was going on and the bombings and stuff. And you know, I, I was just like, I was I was getting into an emotional state that I wasn't too fond of, and that's why I had to tell him. I said, bro, as hard as it is, just don't look. You know what I mean? Like, don't look. It's not, uh, he was coming in and he was just, he was just out of his own wife had to tell Sal, right? Like, hey, you know, uh, like all you can do is donate. Sal wanted to go over there. Yeah, he was about to hop on a plane. I had to tell him, I had to like tell him. By the way, my wife doesn't even know about this. Oopsie. Tell him what you want to do now. I actually, uh, uh, there was a mission to go uh, to Gaza and uh, I I, I said, yes, sign me up. I'm going to go. My wife didn't. (laughs) <laughs> sorry baby uh <laughs> yeah and Oof. uh and it, it didn't happen because it's, it's too hot obviously it's real hot but what you see that you can't unsee it and unfortunately social media is is bombarding you with everything else so you get to see that and not see this and i, I, I before we even start this i said that i think palestine is like the sacrificed lamb uh to to show us what's happening in the world, like we're not safe. Like everybody thinks that, oh yeah, it's 2024. Like we're, we're fine. This is, this just, ha- this happened almost 80 years ago, World War II. So we're fine. No, we're not. Because if something like this can happen today, that can happen to any of us. And somebody can throw some propaganda showing that, oh yeah, they're, they're evil. Don't worry about it. There's billboards nowadays. I'm like, who's paying for oh, those I billboards? Saw, uh, there's billboards here kidnapped. on the yeah, highway. Yeah, this person kidnapped, yeah, got kidnapped it, by Hamas. I'm like, yeah. Did you what know about that? the There's so ca- you know it's like so then we know, we must take 40,000 innocent lives. Uh, but then know? you get to see the true color of 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 the supporter that don't even, they don't even know what's going on. Yeah, there's not enough babies that died. I'm like, are you listening a, a personal yeah. friend of mine that was on our all older podcast. I got in a debate with him and I was I'm like, man, I I don't agree what Hamas did that killing is wrong. I've been in war so I know like killing is is, is the worst thing you can be is be in a war and see loved ones die. Yeah. And to hold him in your arms and see, like, that that was the person that I loved. Mm-hmm. And people are saying, "Yeah, kill more of them." Like, do you, like these are children. These these are human beings. But the 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 social media is making it look like they're they're not humans. They're they're doing the same thing that happened in World War II. They dehumanize them and they make it look like it's okay. They were living in 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 uh, in awful circumstances. So if they died, it's okay. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's just a reality. People don't even think anymore. Do, they just act. Jackson, do you remember that? I think it was like in the late 90s, there was this general that gave the whole game plan of what the U.S. Oh, yeah. was going to do. Yeah. Right. That we were going to go into the Middle East and destabilize over a course of maybe 20 years. General you know? Wesley Clark. Well, there. What, what, what did he say, if you recall? And are we do are we are we running that play to the T right now? More or less, yeah. yeah. He said we're gonna go into the Middle East, we're gonna destabilize uh I don't remember all the countries it was off the Gaddafi. Top of my head. It was Gaddafi. Yeah, right? it was that. Saddam, you know, it was Iran at some point. It Syria was like was yep, on Syria. There. That's right. Probably Lebanon was on there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean we're so you a hundred percent we're doing that. And um you know, this this podcast is on YouTube, so I don't want to get anyone in trouble. But ultimately, I guess the way we can say it in a way that is uh, good for the censors Politically is... Politically correct? It, well, you know, I've got many views that are... That's why I was go- I'm gone from YouTube. But I think ultimately, um, you know, when 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 the resistance did what they did, they knew that there would be a response, right? And they knew that response was going to be uh, tenfold, whatever they did. Well, a hundredfold, thousandfold, mm-hmm. not even comparable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now, what have we seen to happen? You know, they they made a strategic bet. They said, "Well, what would we rather have? Would we rather have ten more generations of uh, Gazan children, of West Bank children, growing up and living in the midst of this misery? It is an occupation. You know, this slow genocide, 
or do we rather try to break free and have freedom? And now what has happened since that event occurred? We've seen 143 countries come out and say we recognize Palestinian statehood. Only six now uh, voted against Palestinian statehood. U.S. was one of them. Of course. Uh, we've seen countries like Russia and China who are leading this new multipolar world. They come out and they say, well, we're, we're going to host the Palestinian resistance to create a new post-war government for Gaza. So they're embracing them. Israel has had arrest warrants issued for their leaders. Israel has this International Court of Justice genocide lawsuit. Israel's facing no love uh, on the international stage. And also, I mean, if you look at their military, they're losing the, the, you know, there is a genocide, yes, against the civilians, but there's also, there also is a military fight going on between the IDF and the resistance. And they're losing that. I mean, they're going in with these $4 million Merkava tanks into areas that they've completely obliterated where you have guerrilla warriors that are hiding in the rubble with drones and RPGs and Chinese sniper rifles just waiting for them to come in. That's why we're seeing so many IDF soldiers go back home with missing limbs and mm. taking stints in hospitals. So it's like what has happened since that event uh, is we've seen kind of with COVID Kind of like with Trump, we're now living in this era that is uh, defined, the, the multipolar era is being defined by Gaza and by the resistance and everything happening. Like thinking about the world before all of this, it just seems impossible to even consider. Got it. So what about, okay, devil's advocate, right? So you have Hamas. Hamas's ideology is to wipe Israel off the face of the planet. Not Palestinians, but the, the controlling body. So how do you fight against that? How do you fight against somebody who says from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, meaning that to wipe Israel off the map. So that's their ide ideology to wipe them off the planet. And then America too, death to America. To, to add to your so point. What is, hold on, I'm asking him, hold on. But what, what happens in that situation? How do you divide the line to know what's right and what's wrong? But you have to ask the in question the right way. It's not, they don't want to wipe Israel out. They want to, they the occupation it's, it's it's the zionism so if you talk about it you become anti-semite anti-semite like, yeah. anti -Semite. and that like they combine it together and it's not it's not that's not the truth the truth is that they're they're two separate entities like you have israeli people that don't believe in what's happening a to, lot Absolutely. a lot of yeah. them yeah. they're protesting most of them, and, mo most yeah. of them yes and but they mix it like, oh no you're you're hating jews and that that's that's what they're covering it under. The, the most outspoken people, journalists actually, that I know personally, that I've had on my show for years. Like I started my show, I think in around 2020. And from like day one, I was having these four voices on my show to talk about the conflict in Gaza, among other issues. Uh, this is before the war or like when the war happened? I mean, it, 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 before, before October, I'm talking before about 2020, okay, right. 2021. Uh, which there were horrific massacres that occurred in 2021 in Gaza. But, uh, you know, each one of those journalists that I always have on my show, uh, Max Blumenthal, Aaron Maté, Dan Cohen, and, and Katie Halper, they're all Jewish. So it's like there are so many Jewish voices that say, no, not in my name. We stand against this. Mm. And what I'll say about your question about Israel is there are many like Orthodox Jewish men and women who stand against this. There are many... Uh, you know, there's there's all faiths in Israel. There are all faiths in Gaza. One of the oldest uh, Christian churches in the world. It, it's a it's an Orthodox Christian church in Gaza. They blew it up. Yeah, so that, it's got, like that got bombed. Three percent of all Christians in Gaza have been killed since October seventh. So you, you look at what's happening and what do what do these groups actually want? It's not to wipe off Israelis or anything or. Uh, even Jewish people, what they want is they want a, to have again, because it's it's been done in the past, a country, a single country where you can have all of the faiths live together in peace with one another. And that seems so crazy right now, but there's pictures of it that it's mm -hmm. this has happened in the past. This is a real thing. There's been bloody wars of conquest amongst religions in the past, but we've still had that in the past as well. So, you know, I think the whole uh, one last point the thing about like death to America, yeah. uh, you know, it's like, uh, I was talking earlier about the Houthis in Yemen, right? 
on the Houthis flag, it literally says death to America, right? That's like part oh, of their wow, slogan. But they hosted me. The prime minister of Yemen hosted me to speak in front of uh, 4,000 Houthi soldiers just about two months ago. So it's like, yeah, death to this system of imperialism that's bombing all of their families and their people, uh, starving uh, innocent Yemeni children yeah. for years and years and years. But they love American people. They just like the Americans that are uh, understand what's happening. Not you the know? government. Exactly. The people. They love the people. You, you brought up uh, uh, Orthodox Jews, and I did some research on this, but Orthodox Jews don't even feel like Israel should even have a nation. They feel like it's against God's will for them to have a nation. And that's like an internal problem in Israel and with Orthodox Jews and, I guess, Zionist Jews. That, that's why there's a lot of videos of... Um, the I think it's called the IOF, the Israeli something forces. It's like their state police. There's all these videos of them beating up Orthodox Jewish people mm -hmm. in Israel. Wow. And also that's why Israel doesn't have an official constitution because it would offend so many of the uh, Orthodox Jewish people around the world, not just in Israel, but it would offend them because it's seen as going against uh, the basic tenets of Judaism. I just saw that you posted something not even a, a couple hours ago about the history of what happened in, in Palestine. And thankfully now there is there is like docuseries is like on Netflix, like you got Tantura, uh, you got World War Two, actually. Have you seen World War Two from the front lines? Oh, yeah, I've watched wow. parts it's on, of that. Oh, it's, it's, it's powerful at yeah. the very, very end, the last couple of minutes of it. You know what it says? Have, have you watched no, it? No, I haven't watched the end. OK, the, at the very end, it says and the, the the powerful countries at the end, uh -huh. uh, they decided to give uh, to, if, to give up Palestine to the Jewish, Jewish uh, people. Uh, people because because World War II, like obviously they, they were misplaced. In, they were misplaced. In, yeah, they were, they were yeah. massacred, and it, 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 I in cried Europe. watching that. I actually watched it a couple of times just to like comprehend it's what happened. It's the picture you see where the Jewish folks are coming over on that big boat that mm -hmm. says "Thank you for allowing us to you know to come." You know what I mean? Have you yeah. seen that picture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah of course. Yeah. The, is that the yeah? Is that the one you're talking about, Sal? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, the from the front lines. I don't know which picture. Yeah, it's, it's the same picture. Oh yeah, picture. when the ship came. The ship, yeah, yeah, and they, the yeah, picture. they were welcoming them. Yep. The crazy thing is, uh, you know, everyone everyone who was fighting on all sides, you know, uh, they were all Zionists in the sense that they believed in an Israeli state. Mm -hmm. All sides of World War Two. Um, mm. the only differences, uh, were that they didn't know where they were going to create the Israeli state. So there were some people saying Madagascar, some people saying Palestine, some people, uh, there was, you know, a very infamous German leader who said Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was, a, you know, th there were all these different places that they were thinking about creating and establishing a Palestinian state. The U.S. envoys who went to Palestine uh, to actually investigate whether or not this would be a good place to establish an Israeli state they came back and told the president, no, this is really not a good place. We don't recommend this. There were famous generals saying, no, Palestine, this is going to create a lot of problems for us in the future. Um, it's going to hurt our national security. But that is what happened. You can't, you know, you can't erase history. Uh, and, and now I think what everyone just wants is like, it sounds so corny, but it's like everyone to live in peace. And if people don't want to live in peace, then they're they're welcome to go you know, live somewhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you can't stop yourself from committing barbaric acts of terrorism or um, injuring and hurting and harassing people just because their skin color or their religion, it's like, well, maybe you should go live somewhere where you are going to be able to avoid any of that if, if it's that much of a problem for you. you what's, know? what's your take on the word anti-Semite? Because I, I did some research right way before back in the days but a semite is 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 a jew and arab right but anti-semite means you hate jews so how did arabs all of a sudden get taken out of that semite category well there is like real anti-jewish hatred in the world that's for sure but you're also correct to point out that semites are people from that land so you have like you have literally uh if you're from that land you could be any you could be any religion but right. you're from the land uh from the levant and you know it's like I was just with people last week from Bintish Bed in South Lebanon. They're Semites. You know, they were, we were like, yeah, I'm a Semite too. You know, you, you, I'm not an anti-Semite, yeah. right? But it is true that there's a bunch of anti-Jewish stuff. And I think it's usually course, overblown, yeah. but that is a real thing.
for sure. I got a question. So <clears throat> have you, do you think that this war that's been going back and forth, right? Um, if you think about it, the, the, the Middle East and that region, when was the last time it was that like true peace? You know what I mean? When was the last time it was re- here? Let's take it back to, I don't know if you remember this story because it's funny because my wife and I were just watching this movie with Richard Gere. Um, it's not the one where he had a hamster up his butt. It's another one. Pretty Woman? Is no, it's not Pretty Woman. Okay. My favorite movie. <laughs> you guys um, watch it together. It was, it was called right? David. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I don't know if you remember the biblical story from the Old Testament. This was thousands of years ago. The Philistines and the Israelites were at war. Yeah. Goliath was a Philist- Philistine, right? And David was an Israelite. See, they were... And then apparently, if you look at the evolution of that sector of land, Philistine became Palestine. And, and you know, you know what I mean. So, what I'm saying is, and Palestine is about six thousand miles, six thousand six thousand square miles, or something of that nature, right? So, this war that's going on right now in that little area has been going on for thousands and thousands of years. You know what I mean? So, my question is. When or how does it end? Well, what do, what do they? Okay, one side wants liberation. Yeah. Does the other side want control, or do they want the land? What's their objective? What we need to have, if specifically in Palestine, is just equal rights for everyone. I think that that it's again, it sounds crazy to even suggest that, or it sounds corny or whatever, but it's like. Israel has about 54 laws on the book that didn't discriminate against, um, you know, Palestinians. Ar- yeah, Palestinians and Arabs and stuff. So, you know, that, that, that those are obvious problems. Um, but ultimately for the whole region, because it is much bigger than that, you have to look at where do the problems stem from? There's a reason why if you look at Iran... Uh, you have these crazy terrorist attacks and you have this, uh, you know, now it's it's getting much better, but it's it's a country that's been at war and had war cast upon it for so many years. You look at Iraq, same thing. You look at Lebanon, same thing, especially South Lebanon. You look at Syria, same thing. You look at um, you look at all these countries. I mean, Egypt has been involved in wars, obviously. Uh, but what is what is the provocation? The provocation is the same exact provocation that Russia is facing in Ukraine. It's the same exact provocation that China is facing with Taiwan. It's the U.S. imperialist system that is trying to uh, bend regions of the world to its will. Israel is a lot of things, but at its core, the only reason why it's to do everything it does is because it is a glorified U.S. aircraft carrier in the region. And the only reason why Egypt and Jordan aren't seeing the same negative impacts that other countries are facing like Lebanon or Syria right now is because they get billions of dollars every year from the United States and they do have U.S. military bases. Saudi Arabia, the UAE, same sort of thing. The British went in and cut up the Middle East with all these fake countries on fake lines and they completely screwed up the area. And there have been, uh, you know, groups of people in the past recently, um, you know, who have tried to fight for a greater region. I think the whole idea of like having small countries, I, I don't really, I don't really think there should be any small countries. I mean, when you try to artificially dictate uh, countries based on these like weird lines, all you end up with are this division, this division but also you end up with these like um, hyper, uh, you know, hyper, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like, divide yeah divided societies but especially upon class lines right Mm -hmm. and that's very true in the middle east you look at europe i mean europe's a mess of like a thousand countries all Mm -hmm. cut look at america america's beautiful (laughs) because it's like we're one thing it's a united front Mm -hmm. the colonies all kind of acted as different countries and when the when the when the revolutionaries came together they said we want to do something that's never been done before one whole union of people that are Mm -hmm. fighting for a common value and common goal Mm -hmm. In the Middle East, they tried that with, uh, you know, the greater Syrian party, which was also a militia movement and an army. And they believed in a greater Syria and just the whole region being a greater Syria. And it would have the same government, same goals, same values, all that stuff. 
You look at today, I mean, the reason why it's the mess it is is because of U.S. occupying forces, U.S. military aid, and bought-off politicians in Saudi Arabia and the UAE who are now bringing strip clubs and, like, alcohol to the Middle mm. East. I mean, mm. it's really crazy. So uh, going back to what you said, which was, I, I love what you said, you said, everyone should have equal rights, right? So let's just say Palestine is liberated. Hamas is the controlling body there. Well, they were you already if, the controlling you think, body. There. You think if a gay person goes into Palestine, they're going to have equal rights under that that regime or that control or whatever you want to call them? Wow. Yeah, do some of these countries, by Hold the way, on, the Muslim one, countries... One question at a time, yeah. bro. It's not... <laughs> do they still... Have, <laughs> let him no, the question that's Sharia law, by the way. You're talking yeah, about Sharia I, I, law. I'm interested in knowing what he'll say. Stop. You're talking about Sharia okay, law. Continue, Jackson. Sorry. <laughs> Every country on this earth has different laws that, you know, they collectively agree upon and uh, demand are followed by the people. Right. So um, to answer the question, I think it might be good to look at like Russia, Russia. If you go to Russia today, they have a very harsh stance against the I mean, they've literally banned transgender surgeries. They've banned the ability for gay couples to adopt. They have banned the pride movement as an organization in the country oh, because it targets, it was in Russia targeting children, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. So, but you look at Chechnya, which is a part of Russia. It's a Muslim majority part of Russia, oh, right? Wow. The leader of Chechnya, Ramzan Kadyrov, he was asked, uh, you know, by, I think it was a BBC journalist. They, they asked him something like, well, uh, you discriminate against gays in Chechnya, this part of Russia. And he looked at the journalist and he said, there are no gays in Chechnya. You know, like if there are, you know, they're, they're, they, they, they're, the they're not place. here anymore. Yeah. yeah, they're in the wrong place. Something yeah. like that. So, you know, um, the Middle East is interesting because they have the, they, you know, they sovereignty means the ability to choose your own path in life. So it's not for us as the United States to say, we have these values and you mm. must agree to these values. And if you don't, we're going to sanction you. We're going to invade your country. No, they have, they have their own way you know, of living their, their lives life, and they right. can choose that. I will say there is, uh, you know, like in, in Iran, Iran is like also against the whole pride movement, but they actually do a lot of transgender surgeries in Iran, wow, which is interesting. Really? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they, they do. It's, it's a very odd thing, <laughs> but they do. So in the 90s, gay people were being thrown off of buildings. Like if you were... Arabic. That is the Sharia law. That yeah, that that's what I'm saying. About. Yeah, is that still being practiced in some of those countries? The sure. the the Sharia law. Like, are people are gay people still being thrown off of buildings? Well, you know, I don't want to get you banned from YouTube, but I think you got three that, strikes. You're okay. No, it's <laughs> it's it's serious. It's like I think I'll just say this. I think in the West. You know, America is a, a country that's founded upon, in a lot of ways, Christian values and Christian beliefs. Well, if you look at America today, we are so far from that. I For mean, sure. It, 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 we've removed God from everything. Yeah. We've removed, but it, it, we are li literally living in, uh, you know, it's like Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah. And Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. Biblical times. So yeah. you look at America today right. and see what's happening and see what the consequences of that are. A generation of weak men, yep. effeminate men, yep. men that are not producing at the same levels that they used to, men mm -hmm. that have low testosterone, yeah. historically low testosterone levels, men that can't defend themselves, can't defend their children, their wives, any of that stuff. It's like, then you look at Iran or you look at any of these Middle Eastern countries and these guys are out here willing to, again, put death before dishonor, take a bullet for what they believe in, uh, fight to defend their countries, fight to defend their sovereignty it kind of makes sense why the U.S. aircraft carrier in the Middle East, Israel, is now suffering this historic defeat, historic bloody nose by all of these resistance fighters because they do stand on business, unlike us in the West who have abandoned everything that made us who we are. So I think it's important to stand for the values that make you who you are. And I guess that's a that's a long way of answering the question in a in a in a uh, way that doesn't get you banned. Okay. <laughs> Here goes another question for you. I'm gonna start hitting you with some tough ones. All right. Okay. You trying to get banned, bro? <laughs> I think no. Testing no. Let's, let's, I love the level of courtesy, though. Thank <laughs> you. Absolutely. <laughs> let's let's talk about positioning, right? So you're you're telling me that the U.S. was intelligent enough 
decades ago to position themselves around the globe to where, you know, if, if, if something were to pop off, we're already there. The Mediterranean, like we don't allow Russian, you know, aircraft carriers near in the, in the, in the Gulf of Mexico. You know what I mean? We have all kinds of military in the Mediterranean Sea, right? We have all kinds of military in the, near the English Channel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? To where it's almost like, I guess that's what people used to always complain about, right? It was like supervision, right? We're constantly supervising all the other countries. Helicopter we're constantly, we're co yeah, we're constantly <laughs> supervising the rest of the world, right? So you do have to admit the U.S. did position themselves very well throughout the globe, right? I think the purpose of a military is to defend your homeland. So For sure. you look at China and Russia today and uh, well, they've got, they've got the strongest militaries in the world. In fact, Russia this year was ranked as having a stronger military than the United States. And wow. that's, that's not just due to, that's not just due to like uh, the organization of your military. It's not just due to the fundamental values of your military. It also has to do with like, what is your, what is your military doing and what is it planned to do in the future? Well, America, we have 500 military bases across the world. Um, if someone wanted to invade us, of course we, we would launch missiles and whatnot, but what if you had like a standing army hypothetically invade you from somewhere what if what if russia captured mexico or something like that you know it's no. like would we actually be able to defend ourselves it'd probably be a, it'd probably be a close call mm. but russia today you look at their military china today you look at their military millions of people that are in their country defending their borders protecting their interests um in russia now creating new borders i guess in ukraine but um what 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 is the purpose of having a large military if you're going to use it to play politics around the world, yeah. that, that's not the purpose of a military. The purpose of a military is to defend your borders, defend your sovereignty. And America is captured from within. America has been captured with, right. from within, I'd, I'd argue, from the very beginning, from the inception almost of our country. But mm. ultimately, um, Russia is strong because it can defend it. You brought up the nuclear weapons earlier. Why did we invade Iraq? Because... They say, oh, they had weapons of mass destruction. Uh, okay, so you invaded Iraq because you claim, you lied, that they had weapons of mass destruction. Why don't they invade Russia? Why don't they invade China? Mm. Because they, they actually or do North have weapons. Or North Korea. Those countries actually do have they weapons do. of mass destruction. That's why we're not invading them. It's the, it's, the same, it's the actual reason. They actually do have weapons of mass destruction. That's why we're not invading them. Well, I think our first line of defense in the military, if we were to ever be invaded, should be the transgenders. And let me just tell you why. <laughs> no, we have, I think we, we have a good amount of transgenders that have joined the army, by the way, because that is what our army is becoming. I don't know if you knew that, which is very sad to hear. But anyway, let's make another point. Muslims, okay, Arabics. Whenever I've noticed historically that when they are not at war with a country like Israel, they're at war with each other. The Sunnis versus the Shiites, right? Constantly. You, you, you understand, like, whether, like, they're always at war. The, the Muslims, I'm not going to say Muslims, but the Arabic world, right? The Arabic world has been at war with itself for many, many, many years. You know what I mean? Since Ishmael. Right? Exactly. So, and then now, I think this is, God willing, we don't see this. But this might be the first time where they're kind of all pissed off wow. at one specific target, right? And they're like, yeah, I know you're Sunni and I'm Shia, but you know what? This dude's killing our kind on both sides. Yeah. That is a concern, the if you ask me. My enemy is my enemy. That is a concern, if you ask me. Uh, it's a concern to the to the warmongers and the imperialists, right? I think personally, we should be pushing for interfaith dialogue and cooperation with everyone. Mm -hmm. I'm an Orthodox Christian, so I don't mean to get in the middle of the Sunni Shia thing. But what I will say is, who 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 gets to decide and lead the fate of a given people? Whoever is willing to stand on business. Who stood on business with the Gazans? 
Well, Iran was behind everything that happened on October 7th. Iran provides a lot of the military assets that Gaza utilizes. Iran provides the blueprints for the rifles that they that they manufacture in Gaza. Uh, Yemen stood up for the Gazans in a very big way. Uh, Hezbollah has stood up in a very big way. So you look at what's happening, and then you look at the predominantly... Uh, Sunni-led countries, what are they doing? They're they're still doing business with Israel. They're still doing this uh, trade with Israel and the United States. They're trying to say, oh, you know, maybe we'll have diplomatic relations with Israel very soon. So who stood on business? It's the predominantly, not that all the first ones I listed were Shia, but it's predominantly the Shia-led, uh, you know, groups in the region and countries in the region that stood on business. And that is who gets to dictate the faith of the region. It, mm. it, so, just like Saddam back in the day. Mm -hmm. Well, Saddam was Sunni. Sunni. Saddam yeah, was but, Sunni. but Saddam stood on business back in the day. Remember? Yeah, but, but you nobody were wanted to attack Israel, and then he's waiting around for all the other countries, and he's like, okay. All lots the first missiles, right? Yes. And then nobody followed. But but humanity, <laughs> uh, uh, humans, like we always need to f to have a common enemy to unite, and mm -hmm. that that's just how we how we operate. And we are talking about Sunnis and Shias, right? That that's a religion where that, they stand based on religion beliefs. Mm -hmm. But you look into any other country, they they have factions, and whether that's a political party or it doesn't have to be a religion where you're separated. Yeah. Right. You have you have so many other things that separates you. So yes, in the Middle East, you have the Sunnis and Shia that they're always at conflict. But then what about our own country? Like we we have conflict. Well, well, excuse me, but you know I, I'm a. You know, I'm a, I'm, I would say, am I an Orthodox Christian? I know I'm no. I, I, a Pentecostal, whatever, right? Yeah, but, but you're, you're but pointing I'm it not, to a religion. Me and the Baptists aren't going at each other right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, like, but, <laughs> but, you're, but then there's two different politics. Like, they go hard. More, it, it's, uh, yes, it's more civil in other countries. In the Middle East, it's more barbaric. It's I, super barbaric. But I, absolutely. I, I'll, I'll make a comparison. Like, I, I agree that there is this uniting ba base on a common enemy. You're kind of seeing that with like Catholics and Orthodox Christians, because Orthodox Christians are always the the dudes that stood on business. Russian Orthodox Christians, when it comes to uh, fighting a lot of things, but fighting the cultural uh, degeneration of the West, and they say that is bad. You know, we should we should not let that happen to our country. For sure, and I agree. By the way, and the Pope, the Catholic Church has kind of been much more tolerant, but this Pope recently has come out and said some things that align much closer with the Russian Orthodox mm. Church. Mm. I was, I'm, I'm organizing a uh, big Russia United States peace conference with a bunch of big influencers in the United States. And the Pope has already said, I want to participate in this alongside uh, religious leaders from the Russian Orthodox Church and Muslim leaders and Jewish leaders from within Russia. So it's like, if we can align on a common enemy and that enemy is war, cultural degeneration and uh how all about, these great how evils. About evil yeah exactly evil right that that's good yeah that's good so just to wrap it up by the way brother your insight today has been absolutely amazing absolutely. And, and we appreciate you right and my i guess my last question for you is you know what are some of your geopolitical goals this year what are you looking to achieve this year we're halfway through the year what what do you want to achieve this year well as long as we continue ac accelerating uh, the forces of multipolarity and putting America in a position to achieve, as I mentioned at the start, like win-win cooperation, peace with other nations, economic prosperity for all of our nations, I think that's a good thing. So uh, next week, I'll be going out to Russia to meet. Uh, I was invited by President Putin to go to the St. Petersburg Economic Forum, where we're going to be talking about those very things. Um, then I'm going to the Ukraine front where I'm going to be meeting with people there. Then I'm going to China, then Iran, and then Venezuela, where I'm going to be interviewing the president of Venezuela. And all of these countries are countries that are focused on those same goals. Their people are aligned on those goals. We have to make sure that we wake up our own country as to what's happening in the world economically, militarily, and culturally, because all of these problems started in America and that means they have to end in America. Oh. So I love the MAGA movement. I don't know if I'll vote for Trump because he's, you know, he's kind of going along with all this Zionist stuff. But 
I love the MAGA movement. That's why I say I'm a part of MAGA. I love MAGA because the people of Trump's movement stand for the right things and yeah. they, they get the issues correct. Yes, they have been betrayed by Trump on some issues, not in the way that CNN and The View talk about, but they have been betrayed on <laughs> like you. <laughs> Ukraine and COVID. They've been betrayed. So let's make sure that we keep the MAGA movement focus on the right issues when it comes to Gaza, when it comes to Russia, when it comes to China, when it comes to our own economy. Because if we don't, then that means we, we lose the fight. How are we going to stop it anywhere else if we can't stop it in our own country? Mm -hmm. Um. You know what? I do have one more question because you are you have been heavily censored. I can understand why now they're like this dude's trying to take us down. Right. So <laughs> clearly. Right. But why don't they censor, you know, David Harris Jr. or Candace Owens or Trump Jr. Like or D.C. Drano? Why aren't they censoring these people? Well, why I think, you? I think they have, you know, Candace has definitely seen censorship from Ben Shapiro. Oh, God, um, bro. I. I I am not, not a, a whole other fan. podcast. I'm not a huge fan of that dude. Bro. I, used I am to be. not a huge fan of that dude. You used to be? I used to be. I'm not. Yeah. You know, ultimately, um, there's a lot of people who talk about like think of it, think about this. Think about like Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump. They have like the same exact policies when it comes to, you know, domestic issues, right? Yeah. But the superstructure of power in the West does not root its dominance in you know, culture wars. It does not root right. its dominance in immigration policy or anything like that. It roots its power in the methods of super imperialism and control over the resources of the world, financial sectors of the world. And ultimately, if you don't challenge that, then you're not really a threat to the system. So mm -hmm. Donald Trump, to a very small extent, did try to challenge that. And that's why they're going after him as hard as they are. Ron DeSantis, pro-Ukraine, pro-Israel, anti-North Korea, anti, you know, every country that's based on the earth, anti-Venezuela. <laughs> Donald Trump may not like those countries, but he's trying to bring peace yeah. with them and uh, do business with them and reintegrate them into the system. And North, uh, sorry, Ron DeSantis was like, let's bomb them all. He's like Lindsey Graham, right? Wow. So th when if you don't challenge the, the actual center of power, they're not going to cancel you. They're not going to do anything. You can talk about Epstein. You can talk about Diddy. You can, you know, I like a lot of those people you mentioned, but when it comes to foreign policy, no. they miss the mark. Yeah. They, yeah. They're they 100% no. aligned with the deep state. And maybe that's not because they're nefarious, but, you know, it's like for for some reason they do. And that's why a lot, they're allowed to keep talking in the way that they do. We, that makes we, a lot of sense. We get, we get told that we're a democracy, but we're really a republic. But really, if you really pay attention, the moment you put your military in another country, you become an empire. So mm. we're not a democracy. We're not a republic. We're an empire. So I think what you're saying is if you don't mess with the empire, the empire isn't going to mess with you. Ultimately. I mean, I, I don't even think I, I don't. So you're like a Jedi. Mm. Empire Strikes. I'm sack. like I'm like Darth Vader. I'm trying to bring people to the dark side. Oh my oh god! No. Oh. Well, think about it. Think about it. I, I haven't watched much uh, Star, Star Wars, Wars, but so. the stormtroopers are they? They're against Darth Vader, right? No, no, no. They're no, they're, they're, they work for. They, they work can't for shoot for shit. Who are the ones that are they're like liberal. against him? J the, Jedi. the resistance. The Jedi. The, Jedi. the, Jedi. the, resistance. the resistance. Yeah, they're kind of gay, right? <laughs> it's they like have. you look at the you, the stormtroopers, the ones in white. Yeah, 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 those, yeah. those guys look hard. Yeah, they do. Those guys they look do. hard. The it's red, like, the red ones are crazy, right? The ones in all red. Yeah, well, I don't know. I haven't even seen those like communist, you know, stormtroopers or something. But like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like that goes kind of hard. Yeah. So it's like let's bring people over to the base uh, worldview and let's. Uh, that, that I don't I don't know Star Wars so I can't really speak to it but they just seem cool. <laughs> I'm more like I'm more like a okay. like the Mandalorian and he's like the little baby that I carry. You're like the Mexican yeah. Mandalorian. <laughs> Grogu. He's Grogu. 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 Yeah. 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 So, Have you guys seen that Border Hopping Hopping Have you guys seen that new show Fallout? I, yes. I already went through all 10 episodes. Okay, so you know in Fallout how this is what we have to be the, like. The what are they calling the Voltees or the, the the Those are the liberals. Those are the liberals. Oh, yeah. They're trying to cancel everyone. They're saying, oh, you know, we we must like we must educate the the uncivilized masses. Yeah. Who are the most base people in that show? Obviously, the guy that's like the the outlaw. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's the most um, he's like the 
he's like the, the basic the, yeah, the, American. What's his name? The ghoul. Ghoul. The ghoul. ghoul. Yeah, ghoul. Yeah. He's so base. But the other second most base <laughs> he's a people. Badass, by the way. Yeah. The other people that are the second most base are uh, the communists, right? And they say, well, we're not communist, but they are communists. They like unlock that uh, that rare energy, uranium or whatever, mm -hmm. like fusion energy, and they just unleash it upon the masses. Mm -hmm. We have to be the people that unleash the truth and the energy in real life mm -hmm. amongst the masses worldwide. And there's going to be a lot of forces trying to stop us. But once we do, there's, there's no going back. Mm -hmm. Fun fact. Uh, back in the day, I just learned this. There was actually vaults uh, back in the day, and there was now like, they're bunkers. Well, they're yeah, yeah. And, and well, bunkers or vaults, yeah. and they actually had those those canned foods really? and everything. Yeah, for like for the fallout, like the rich people my, had it. Bro, my wife, uh, she's becoming what do you call it, a prepper or doom uh, doom prepper. Doom, doomsday oh, prepper. Doomsday That's fair. prepper. That's fair. She she literally has a can of beans in the one can. <laughs> Why beans? Yeah, it's just one. Yeah. They're it. good protein. She has a can of beans in the uh, guest guest room closet. I'm like, babe, you're gonna need a lot more than some toilet paper <laughs> and a can of beans, but it kind of does go together. They go right? hand in hand. Yeah, yeah. They do. Yeah. So anyway, brother, uh, I appreciate you coming on the show today, man. I know you're gonna be around uh, for a few days. Uh, we'd love to, you know, continue to catch up on some things, but um, we appreciate him. Can we give this man a, a hand? Bro? Absolutely. Thank you, well, thank you guys. Thanks for having Appreciate me on. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation, and uh, there's not a whole lot of smart people who have uh, shows and stuff. So you guys are, <laughs> and you got to keep doing it and bringing on all these guests. Absolutely. So, well, you inspire the youth, bro, and and I think that's ultimately where where it needs to happen. Right? It's it always comes down to the youth. Yeah, you inspire the youth. Yeah. You know, you give. I have a nine year old son, and you give me hope that there are still people that are. Um, very patriotic that want the best you want peace throughout the entire world yeah. right and so we appreciate that for you yeah absolutely thank bro. You. well thank you for tuning in um if you have not shared the show please do so subscribe if you haven't and we'll catch you next week thank you